interior decorator. The first thing I said to my mother is, I don't want to be an interior decorator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any, you know, it's just silliness. Because we never stop to think. We should devote our life to, what's the, why do you have such a beautiful child? What is the purpose of it? Where did it come from? Did any of you see television? The other night, I, I'm into all this stuff. I really like this stuff. They had the crop circles in England. Did you, did you see this on television? It's amazing stuff. Guy goes to bed, he says, in his, his pasture, his field, you know. He says, there was nothing there. Woke up the next morning, there's a, there's a circle with a, with a geometric design in it. Nobody knows where it comes from. But what's the purpose of all of these things? In the, in the West, which we say we give our life to Christ, Buddha says, you give your life to nature, you give your life to understanding yourself. See, in, in, in Japanese, the word is kimyo. And that's, you know, Buddha comes up. K-I-M-Y-O is the word. Kimyo. And it means key to dedicate one's life. Uh, dedicate one's life. And yo, which means life. Dedicate one's life. All right. But to dedicate one's life, to me and to you, what we should be doing is dedicating one's life each of our lives to changing the flow of what we've seen in the past of life. No more bombs should fall. No more children should die. Little children like this beautiful child. Let's put it on television. Come on. Get up. Bring it, bring it away. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. No, no, no. Right. Notice the way she didn't move her mouth. And she said, I don't like doing that. It's great. You could be a ventriloquist. <laughs> I don't like to do this. Will you see this beautiful child? You got a good close up? No, my mom is here. It's in the microphone. No. <laughs> no, it's a, What's her name? This is a, what is your first name? Janice. Janice. Chrissy, little Chrissy. You're a little Chrissy? I'm, I'm big Chrissy. You're big Chrissy. Okay, I just wanted to show you this. I'm trying to make a point. You did great. I know. She did great. Yeah, round of applause. But let me tell you, let, let, me, let me tell you, do you see how beautiful it is in here today? See how beautiful the little child is? Do you know that in a, in a land not too far from here, little children like that are being killed by bombs? In an ethnic war between two religious groups, Christians and Muslims in Croatia, little children like that. Children starving to death in places. Children living under boxes. Because they say, oh, well, we have to take care of ours first, see. The American way. You have to take care of that. No, yours is ev when you follow Christ, when you follow and understand that essence which is God in nature, everything is yours. Responsibility for everything is yours. There is no difference between a child who lives in Croatia or in Timbuktu or, 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 or Somalia than this child sitting right here. They're children. It's not a Somali child that's starving to death, it's a child. And this is when my plea, that little Chrissy learns that she and the child in Somalia are just children. They play with each other and understand each other and love each other. What? <laughs> what did I say? Big Chrissy, little children. <laughs> so what, what we're t but anyhow, you got the point. And, and, and someday she'll grow up and she'll see the tape and she'll say, what a fakakta he was. <laughs> this is where I got my head washed. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, but if you are to understand, then you've got to change, I've got to change, and we've got to come into a new way of practicing faith. In this case, Buddha, in our case, Jesus. If you want to follow, attain Buddhahood, you've got to listen to Buddha. If you want to follow Jesus, you've got to listen to Christ. You've got to listen, see? And, and what does he say? Why did you come here? Why did Joey come here? Because we gave them a choice of finding something within themselves. Not finding some system that is violent and rough and, and drops people out and makes people unable to compete, but finding something within your unique personality, yourself. It's very important. Jesus was very clear about what you had to do. Jesus Christ says, you don't want to find out what's, what life is about? Seek within yourself. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth to say how great he was. He came to this earth to say how great you are. You know what Jesus Christ said? You can do better than me. You know what Jesus Christ said? The kingdom of God is within you. You know what Jesus Christ said? You are the light of the world. But religion got hold of it. Christianity got hold of it. And what do they do? They sing songs. Amazing grace. What a wretch am I. Who said you're a wretch? They said you're a wretch. They may be a wretch. You're not a wretch. The kingdom of God is within you. Something special. And you know what Jesus Christ said? And take him up on it. He said, hey, pal, the things that I do, you can do. You can do better than me. It's in the book. They won't tell you that part of the book. 
because the part of the system wants to control and strangle and hold you right into your chair so that you feed the till and you don't shake the boat and you do what you say. So the system thrives, the corporate structure thrives, and the people are held together just like so many goats and sheep. Not here. You're an individual and you must rise up in a love revolution and let it all collapse if it may or if it must. Seek within yourself. And this is what Buddha said. He said, faith means you will surely attain Buddhahood if you are true to the entirety of your teachings without adding any of your own ideas or following the arbitrary interpretation of others. Even, even, in, even in, in the New Age, what they call it, people want to be free, what do they do? They've got to go find somebody who has the answer. We're always looking for somebody that's got an answer. Always looking for somebody that's going to read something out of a book. He's interpreting. I'm interpreting. But you can only find that answer when you seek within yourself. From within yourself. Even today in corporate America, they're sending speakers to every, all the large corporations, training people. You know what they call them? They don't call them psychoanalysts or psychologists. They call them motivational speakers. And they'll go in to, to teach salespeople and they'll teach corporate people how to start t touching yourself, realizing that in the very center of you is that catalyst which makes the rest work. And if it's not screwed in right in the center, everything that comes to the outside then is going to be wrong. It says in the Bible, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit in the traditions of men. And that's all we've listened to. That's all religion. Can you imagine what you've listened to? Can you imagine what you have listened to? Here is a grown man, very nicely attired man. Look at all everybody's dressed up. Very intelligent people. You have actually gone in and sat and listened to a man teach you that once upon a time a fish swallowed a man. The man lived in the fish for three days. The fish puked. An evangelist came out. And you believed it. And you came and you gave him money to tell me another story. Okay, I'll tell you another story. Here's a girl sitting there, cut a man's hair, and oh, he lost all of the wars because his hair got cut. You listen. Oh, well, I love that story. Tell me another. Here's two people in a garden. And all of a sudden, they ate an apple that was given to them by a snake who was talking. And what happened? They didn't have any clothes on. And they ran around and they got fig leaves on them. And then everything, and they got kicked out. And you talk, tell me all of these. And we flock into these churches. Tell me these stories. This is great. What about the guy that took two of every animals in the world and put them on his boat? That's a great story. Can you imagine who's, who's going to clean this mess? <laughs> two of every animal in the world. And we've never stopped to say, isn't it time we mature? Aren't we a little older than 10 years old that we don't want to listen to this? Don't we want to understand what these stories mean? Don't you realize that the story of Jonah means that when you're paddling your own canoe, you're running your own thing and you're going to go up on the rocks, but when you cast yourself into the sea, which is God's forgetfulness, there you will swallow by the fish, which represents God, and then when you come out, you'll understand the things of God. It's mysticism. Don't you understand that all of these stories are allegorical parables, mysticism? They have nothing to do with what's being said. Because if this is the case, then this God that just got done killing his son is planning a nuclear holocaust called Armageddon. That's what they teach. And, 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 and his name is love. Can you imagine this? You know what I told him a long time ago? I said, let me tell you something. If your name is God, if you tortured this guy Jesus, the way it says in the book, and now you're planning a nuclear war to kill all the little children, I don't want any part of you. I wouldn't want any part of you. And that's what Jesus Christ said in Mark 7, 9. Full well you reject the commandment of God. You know, he, he, listen to this. You know, how many of you have a Bible in your hand? Just look at something. Go to page 816. Real quick. Mark chapter 7 and verse 9. What does it say? Th what did Jesus Christ say? Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Your own tradition. And your own tradition, which is filled with the violence, the competitiveness, and the separativeness. Religion came along, divided people into groups, and made people suspicious of one another. And everything that has followed has been war and strife and bombs and killing and blood. How can we find our divinity for life and healing or peace if we follow the instructions of men? You know what we do in this life? And I've told you this over and over again, but I would tell you it again and again and again. Instead of going with inside of ourselves where the doctor dwells, we go to the next floor and talk to another patient. Here we are in a mental institution which is called the world. 
We're on ward three, and if we want to figure out how to get better, we go up to ward four and talk to another patient. And we ask the patient, what's wrong with me? Oh, you're demon-possessed. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm demon-possessed. That's religion. And we go to ward four, and that's all we've understood is what somebody else has told us because we've never gone within ourselves. We, 90% of your brain is dormant. 90% of your brain is dormant. We touch, we activate 10% of the brain. 90% of the brain is dormant, and it's the right hemisphere, and Jesus says, cast your nut to the right side. So if you want to learn to drive a car, what do you do? Go and find a bunch of people who don't know how to drive a car and ask them, what do I do? Well, ask them, what do I do? How do I drive the car? Nobody knows how to drive the car. This is what we do with our life. We go to churches where people don't understand. They have made fables and they have made myths as part of reality. And we say to them, what do we do to get saved? And they say, oh, say these words and sign the paper. You go out just as screwed up as you came through the door because you've never done a thing to touch yourself, to change yourself within. How old are you? Look at the children. Look at the child you've got. Do you want this child that you've got to wind up as our system has children winding up? Don't you owe it to, to the children that are in your care to say, for God's sakes, there's got to be a better way. Some way we've messed up. Something we've done is wrong. But listen to me, because what I'm telling you, I'm trying to be, and it, it is serious what I'm telling you. What did Jesus Christ tell you to do? Jesus Christ said the most important thing you can do for your life is meditate. And religion says don't do it. You're open your mind to devils. You don't have any devils in your mind. You'll never be able to drive. You'll never be able to achieve. You'll never be able to do a thing. Because you're listening to those people who have filled you with the fear and the guilt. And you've subjected children to come. And what have you raised your children to be? Soldiers. Sailors. Marines. You've raised your children to be military people, and the military's one job is to make murder patriotic. And that's the job. Make murder patriotic, and that's the job. It doesn't mean that you can't ask questions. It doesn't mean that you can't seek answers. But your answers and your questions have to be asked from a sincere desire to learn about life. And so when Buddha talks about this, the Sanskrit word of Nam says we must practice, as Buddha said or as Jesus Christ said. And Jesus Christ said something to all of the religions people, and he says it to you. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I tell you to do? What's the sense of coming to church? What's the sense of bringing a child like this into a church? For what? Because everybody does it. You don't understand it. We have no knowledge of it. I, I don't know how many of you came in here knowing that when you apply water to someone's head in baptism or christening, it has nothing to do with the water, that it means applying the truth to their mind. And how many of us will spend time with this little child and teach the child truth? Well, you know what we'll, in most cases what we do? We'll send a little child like that into a Sunday school, into a Christian church, and she'll be taught about devils, demons, hell, a man on a cross bleeding to death, and a God who's about ready to launch a nuclear war. And then we wonder where the David Koresh's of the world come from. He was taught in the Sunday school about all of that. He was taught that he had to die by fire. He didn't understand that fire means spirit. It has nothing to do with fire that burns. But he didn't understand that because nobody took the time to explain it to him. And so we all stand around and read in the newspaper, oh, what jerks, what nuts, how could they ever think such things? They learned it in Sunday school. When you take people, especially people who have emotional problems, and teach this kind of stuff, that's exactly what you get. And I think children deserve a lot more than, than they've gotten from the religions. As far as I'm concerned, the best thing that could happen to religions and churches in this country is they'd be closed. Because they've caused so much hurt, so much guilt. And we have the people that walk through these doors and they're trying to run away from that stuff and trying to run away from the guilt and the hurt and the fear. I have a call from a lady from California. It's on our answering machine right now. And she says she got one of her tapes. And she says, I can tell you, I'm a Christian with all the scars of the fear and guilt that's been applied to me all of my life. And I certainly don't want to see this little child who's starting off in life be subjected to that. Because it's not true. There is no hell. There are no devils. There are no demons. There is no punishing God that exists. There is love and there is beauty and there is peace. 
And as I've said over and over again, there were beautiful animals and beautiful things for a child like that to be raised in. And Jesus Christ said, why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? And what he said that you should do is seek first the kingdom which is within you. Seek within yourself for the kingdom. And you'll find it if you'll just be patient enough to take the time. Do you know what most of us will do? We'll run and listen to somebody. We'll turn on the television and listen to somebody. But we don't have the patience to listen to ourselves because we are bored with ourselves. Because we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust what Christ taught. We don't trust what Buddha taught. That the kingdom is within you. There's something very special within you. In the right hemisphere of your brain, that place you've never went, is that which will raise your children and direct you on a path. An animal knows about it. A little dog can give birth to puppies. Knows exactly what to do. Where did, where's, the, where's the instructions come from? The Canadian goose leaves Canada and knows exactly where to go. Where's the instructions come from? The little bird, the robin, leaves its nest in Florida or Carolina. comes right to your backyard. Where's the instructions come from? The instructions are in the pineal gland of the brain, that part which is atrophied in the human brain because we subjected ourselves to the teachings of people who know nothing about it. And through meditation, when you stimulate this pineal gland, you open up the right hemisphere of the brain, and the instructions come, and the instructions will tell you how to raise your child. The instructions will tell you what to do with your life. The instructions will tell you how to live. And the instructions will teach this world eventually. You know, it's all peaceful. I don't know if I believe in it. I remember somebody had said to me a few years ago, I'll believe in this stuff when there's no more Soviet Union, when the Israelis sit down and sign a peace agreement with the Palestinians. Now they could say, when Nelson Mandela of the Black African Congress and Nelson de Klerk, the president of South Africa, stand and get the Nobel Peace Prize, do you know that's what they're going to do together? So it doesn't make any difference whether you believe me or not because the universe is changing with you or without you. I just hope for the sake of your children and for the sake of your life that you tune into it and understand what's going on. It's a new age. It's an age of Aquarius. It's an age of the man with the pitcher of water, as Jesus Christ said in the Bible. When you see the man with the pitcher of water, go into the house, go into yourself, go to the upper room. Will you be part of it or will you drop out? That's up to you. It's not up to me. But the most important thing, when would you say with little Chelsea or with the child that's sitting in that man's arms or this child here, these children should learn one thing, not about devils, demons, and hells that don't exist, but the one commandment that Jesus Christ said, I've only given you one thing, and that is this is my commandment, that you love one another. And you can't love one another when you're following politicians and religions that are keeping you separated from other people and warning you that the other person's the enemy. Buddha against, it comes against hypocrisy, and he says he lists 14 slanders. I'm not going to go into them now. Buddha said that people who go through the motions of meditation, go through the motions of praying, are still filled with all of these jealousies and grudges, and you'll find them in the general public, and you find them in the priesthood. And it's very easy to get priests and ministers up here standing and pointing a finger at you because you're doing this, you're doing that, and you're doing the other thing, and then they're jumping over the fence like Swaggart and running down to some whorehouse in order to entertain themselves for the evening. Oh, well, you know, man of God more pedophile going on out of churches than exist probably in 42nd Street in New York. All under the guise of God. And they're all standing in front of a crucifix and the Holy Ghost and all of this stuff and their holy terrors. And they're praying against little children. And the other organization, the FBI, would be all over them. But after all, this is a religious organization. We don't dare touch them. They should touch them. And the Buddha had taught, as Jesus taught, if you want to avoid, and if your children want to avoid, then the one thing you've got to do is come into a grip and an understanding of yourself. And Jesus put it this way, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. If you stimulate the pineal gland of the brain, you'll start to open up the right hemisphere of the brain, and you'll start to thinking with brain cells which have hitherto not been touched. And Shakyamuni Buddha said, this pathway takes determination. You don't stop the practice because things get better or worse. He puts it this way, you don't stop eating because you get indigestion. And then sometimes it gets worse. You know what Buddha said? You know why? Because you've been living in a cesspool all of your life, but you couldn't smell it. You lost your sense of smell. All of a sudden, you became enlightened. You became awake. You became aware this isn't the way I want things to be. So you set about to change it. Cries in Christian circles as well. It's, it's easy to continue. It's difficult to determine, to make a determination for yourself. In other words, enlightenment is not a goal that you preach and then stop. It's a continuous way of life. It has to be every day. You have to be in touch with yourself. Because I'll tell you something. Right now, as many of you are sitting in this room, there's a little man talking to you. There's a conversation going on in your head right now. If you go up these stairs, there's a conversation going on in your head. But I've told you in this half hour, and I'm done now, I would hope that you've at least listened for five seconds, maybe, maybe for ten seconds, something you've heard. 
because the violence that's gone on. I see a little child standing in that hallway. There's a little child sitting here. And then I think to myself, what's the future for that child? What's the future in such a violent society as this for that child? To me, the future is cause and effect. That child, the effect on his life will be changed by the causes that are made now. You start putting proper causes into the minds of these children, the effect will be a proper life and a beautiful life and a healthy life. But if you leave the causes that are being put into them by religion, by the government, Pick up the paper and you can see for yourself. It's like riding a bicycle. You've got to continue to do it. The forward motion makes you keep going for a while, but then it stops and you fall off. You've got to continue to go. You've got to continue to go. Take no thought for your life, Jesus said, for whoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall save it, which means that you give up that which is within you, that part of your nature, that part of your, your emotion. And you sacrifice that for that period of meditation. And you allow yourself to be lifted off into a realm of total understanding through the communication of meditation. So I pray that this is something that you'll take from this place and say, gee whiz, maybe. <laughs> you know what's beautiful about it? You don't have to join any church. It doesn't cost you anything. Nobody's got their hand in your pocket. You can do it in the bathroom. You can do it in your car. You can do it wherever you want to do it. But for God's sakes, do it. For God's sake, start paying attention to yourself and not to the system. And teach your children also. You look into the eyes of your child and never let any religious person tell them they're a sinner. You say, you know what? Jesus said, you're the light of the world. You know what? Jesus said, you're special. You know what? Jesus said, someday you can do better than him. Be true to your children and don't teach them in the myths and the superstitions of the devils and all of that stuff that religion teaches in order to keep them under control. Allow them to be themselves. I used to teach in... A guru who taught one time, he said, a little child, first thing, look at this little boy here, first thing a little child will do, they love to get up and spin. He said, and the stupidity of parents will say, stop, 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 because they don't understand that child is the closest. These little children in this room are the closest to God because they've been with God much <coughs> recent than we have. And so they'll spin because they go right into the nature of things, into the love of things. Allow them to express themselves. Teach them, first of all, the beauty of animals and the beautiful things of nature. Never teach them about hunting or hurting anything. Teach them to live in tranquility and peace with nature. And then the love of other children and the love of people all over the world and the love of all things. May this be through Christ, through Krishna, through Buddha, through all of those who have stepped under the earth's train before and have tried to teach us the way that we've neglected and we've said no to. Maybe one day, just one day, we'll all live to see these children raised in that love of nature and life without all of those fears and guilt that you and I have had to go through from religion and through the systems of the world. Maybe one day he'll see those different countries coming together and reaching out and touching one another in a oneness, in a universal oneness of peace. Because that's the new age. That's what this earth was created for. The planet earth was created to be the planet heaven. We have made it the planet hell. It can be changed and it will be changed. I just hope that you'll agree to flow in the harmony of nature and be part of it. Thank you very much for sharing this time. And Joan will come on right after. What are we doing tonight? Not at all. It's extremely old. And basically what it is, is not so much something being created new, but a retreat from the competition of something uh, that is hurting us and causing us to be beaten down and frightened and forced out of competitiveness into something that's much more simple. Um, for, for instance, you know, the system itself, in this system, uh, and I see a lot of folks who, you know, poorer people. I find that poorer people, people that don't have the type of jobs or the money that maybe some of the others do, really become the source of oppression from this system, and not only from the government, but from religion as well. Religion and the government both have their hands in people's pockets, and most of the money is made on poor people. Uh, one of the great examples of, uh, of an extremely oppressive thing that goes on, and, and I, I hope there's no insurance salespeople here, but um, if there is, uh, you know, just take it in, in, in heart. But it's automobile insurance. Uh, it's automobile insurance in which the average person uh, can't afford it, and yet their whole lifestyle is built around having to drive a car. 
you know, you've got to drive a car because you've got to get to work to make your seven dollars or seven fifty an hour, eight dollars an hour, and and yet the 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 the, the insurance bills are so tremendous that all over the place there are people driving without insurance, and then they get caught, and the next thing you know, they have their license revoked, and the government says, now you can't drive to work. And so they have to give up their job and go on welfare so that you can support them. Or what all of this, to me, you know, I mean, there just shouldn't be any such thing as automobile insurance. You just take your shot. You drive your car, you, you take your chances. You insure yourself. But you see, the problem is that it's, it's a rich man's culture. It's a rich man's society in the same way that Christianity is a rich man's religion. It is not in any way, shape, or form geared to Hardworking people who can't, if you can keep up, that's fine. I'm able to keep up. A lot of people can keep up. But there's a lot of people who cannot keep up. And, and they become, pro you know, the long-haired kid driving a van up the parkway is a prime suspect. He's done nothing wrong. He's going to work. But he's got long hair and he's got a van. Let's pull him over, you know. And, and the chances are pretty good you're not going to find an insurance card. So then you're going to revoke his license. And the next time you pull him over, he's not going to have a license. Now he's going to go to jail. And it's not because he's, he's bad or he does anything violent or he does anything wrong. He can't keep up with the system. And not only this, but the poor kid goes to church on Sunday trying to do something spiritual, and they got their hand in his pocket and tell him he should give 10% of what he made. I mean, the whole thing is, is, is oppression against people. And so people finally get to the point where they just throw their hands and say, I can't do it. I can't possibly make it. I can't make it in the culture. I can't make it with this religion. It's very easy for millionaire religious people on television to tell you, come to Jesus. I'm sure if you were making that kind of money, you'd come to Jesus too. It'd be no problem. Hey, I'm with you. You know, Look at the guy playing the piano. He's got rings on every finger. Uh, Jesus, I love you. you know, sure you do. You're making a bundle on Jesus. But the people sitting there in the audience, they have to go home. And when they go home, they go into their little shack or their little cabin. It's, it's, it, where is the guy with the rings? Where's the guy with the piano? Where's the songs? They're not there anymore. And so then people all of a sudden say, I can't compete. I cannot keep up with the system. I cannot keep up with the corporate power structure. I cannot keep up with the religions. I can't keep up with any of it. I want out. And they come here. <laughs> 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 basically, and that basically is true. Because, you see what has happened. The doctrines that we have been born and raised with, they're not, they don't work anymore. The, the, re the great religions of the past, the traditions of the past, you can't make it with them. They, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and all, because it's all based on fear and guilt and violence and blood and all of this stuff. I mean, we have a basic fundamental religion that we're all supposed to subscribe to in which we're waiting for the second coming of the hero but the hero of the story said he's not coming but yet we still wait for the hero to come anyhow and then the basis of the story is, is that the grand hero, the grand poopa, is a man sitting on another planet somewhere who decides that the best way to solve the problems of the world is for him to kill his son great, this is our hero called Lion, but this, we love it we base our whole philosophy on this whatever it is somewhere that says the only way that I can straighten out this mess that I've made is to kill this guy. And I won't just shoot him. I'll put him on a cross and drive nails through him. We love it. The bloodier it is, the better we, we like it. And then we want to bring little children into this and say, children, let's read the Bible. No way. No way. It's too violent. And now, instead of listening to all of that violence and blood and guts and carnage, and the same guy, I might say, that just got done killing his son is planning a nuclear war. Did you know that? That's the next thing. It's called Armageddon. It's going to do that. It's going to get you. If he didn't get you, if he got his son. That was good. That got him uh, settled for a while. But now he's going to plan a nuclear holocaust called Armageddon. He's going to wipe out one-third. Does it make any difference how old you are, whether you've done anything or not? He's going to burn everybody up. Nonsense. You know it's absolute nonsense. But this is what we've been taught. And now people stop listening to that. And suddenly, they're starting to listen to voices that seem to have been left behind by our flowering civilization. And these voices are called the oracles of the East. Hmm. You know, some of the biggest selling books in this country today are written by gurus. Do you know that? They're outselling Christian books 10,000 to 1 all over the country. Gurus, 
from India, lamas from Tibet, oracles of China. And the reason is because so many in our culture are turning inward towards a psychological understanding. And do you know what? These oracles of the East, these teachers from Tibet, are psychologists. And they teach in people about themselves. Finally, nobody is saying, you're a sinner, you're worthless, you're going to hell. They're saying, hey, there is something inside of you that if you are able to activate it, your life will improve and the lives of the planet will improve and the lives of the people and the, all of nature will improve if you can start to improve inside of yourself. And do you know who they have as an ally that said the same thing? Jesus Christ. Same thing. See, so it's basically psychological. Joseph Campbell tells of a very interesting thing. I think I shared this with you before, probably watching it on television, you might not have heard it. But it occurred in the spiritual culture evolution of the American Indian. And that was as the West was encroached by the railroads, buffalo hunters were all over the place, and they were reducing herds of buffalo to the point where the buffalo were disappearing. There weren't any more buffalo. And the Indians, their religion was a bond between them and the animals. To them, the animal was God. And it was a good reason for it. Because the animal gave his life, his sacrifice. It wasn't that they killed the animal. The animal sacrificed, here, take me, and I will feed you, and I will clothe you. So the buffalo was God. And when the, the white man came in and encroached, the buffalo suddenly became disappear, and, 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 and this religious attachment became irrelevant because there was no more buffalo. What happened then was that the, as the outer religion became obsolete, the Indians started to turn inward. And that what they called the peyote culture, it was a drug culture, started to move up from Mexico. And the Indians used to sit in their lodges and, and they'd take this stuff and they would pray and they would chant and they would use this peyote and they experienced visions and the reason is they had to find a way to replace within themselves that which had been taken away outside. Somebody had taken everything away from them so they had to find some way to get something back that gave them a reason. And so they would sit and you see them pass on the peace pipe, you know, and they're... But they, they had to do it because what they had was destroyed and mostly by us. And so, basically then, what the Indians were looking for is exactly what you're looking for and the reason you're watching this on television. The Indians were looking for something to give meaning to their lives. The same exact thing is happening today. Because what has happened is all of those things that you treasured as children or you thought of as children, your family treasured, suddenly are starting to become irrelevant. They don't make any sense anymore. They're silly. They're barbaric. They frighten people. And so then we start turning inward to see what is... Let, let, me, let me see if we can make a very important point. And this is a point that Campbell makes that's very important. He says, when the symbols provided by the group fail to work, then you must find new symbols that do work. Hmm. That's interesting. When the symbols provided by the group fail to work, then you must find new symbols that do work. But see, the problem is the new symbols that we're finding are not part of the group. And so the group has got to defend itself. And what do they say? They're from the devil. They're a cult. Everything, everything that they can't explain is from the devil. If somebody gets sick, it's from the devil. No matter what, they, they can't explain any psychological problems. They can't explain mental problems. They can't explain people who need drug therapy. They can't explain any of it. It's all the devil because they don't know what to say. And it's ignorance. It's, it's a terrible sign of ignorance, see? And, but they say, oh, this is of the devil because it's not of our group. We don't understand it, so it must be evil. See? The Apostle Paul was very clear that 2,000 years ago, this man said people had to drop the symbols of the group and go on to the symbols of perfection. Now, this is, look what it says here. Holy Bible. See? B-I-B-L-E. On the side says King James Version. This is the one they all use up and down the highway here. This is the book. All right? Now, I don't know how many times they teach you this, and some of you have gone and still go to these places. I don't know how many times they teach you this, but I would say that it's very important that the Apostle Paul be listened to. In the same way that they don't listen to Jesus Christ, they don't listen to the Apostle Paul. If you have one of the Bibles with you, turn to page 979, because it's something you should see. All right, It's really something you should see, and it's in the book. And I mean, because you can look at me and say, oh, 
This guy's a fruitcake. Well, and, and people say that, strange as it may sound, but uh, they do. But I want you to see this, and I want you to look. Here is the Apostle Paul saying, I want you to drop the symbols that are very important to you. And I want you to go on to the symbols of perfection that are more important to the world and to God. Look what he says. Chapter 6, Hebrews, verse 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Leave these things. Now look what he drops. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. He says you don't have to repent. You don't have to change anything. He says not laying again the foundation of faith towards God. You don't have to have faith in God because the only time you have to have faith in something is when you're not sure. When you go on to perfection, you know. You absolutely know because you run face on, head on into that which we call God. That which is the power of the universe which is inside of you. When you touch it, you know. So you don't have to have faith. The Apostle Paul also said, hey, let's stop the doctrines of baptism. Do you see it? Have they stopped? Our fans, have they stopped? Do they still do it? Every day they're dumping people's head in the water. Take you down to the creek, stick your head in the water. Apostle, it says in the Bible, don't do it anymore. They do it. How many times your pastor read this to you? Won't read this one. In fact, it doesn't even have a page in here anymore. What else should he say we shouldn't do? Laying on of hands. Stop it. Says so. Hebrews 6, 1. Shouldn't do it anymore. Why? Because all of these are symbols of metaphysical and mystical values of power. And he said, get away from the symbols and get to the power. They never have. Resurrection from the dead. The Apostle Paul did not believe that anybody ever rose from the dead, including Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, that which is so corrupt cannot inherit incorruption. There's many other things that he said about resurrection of the dead he didn't believe. And of eternal judgment. He says, forget about it. These are symbols to get you to understand the mystical power. It's in the Holy Bible, King James Version, giant print. You know what I mean? It's in here. But why don't they tell you that? Why don't they tell you that they shouldn't do baptisms anymore because the Apostle Paul said they should stop? Because he said all you people are doing is focusing on sticking somebody's head in the water and figuring it's some kind of spiritual thing, and all that has happened is they've gotten their head wet. So anyhow, there is, um, when, you, when you think about that, you say, well, what the heck is going on? There's a Dr. John Perry of the University of California presents a very unique thought that I would like to share with you. Dr. Perry says what is going on in what we call the New Age today is what he calls effect image. Effect image. And the way he explains it is if each one of you who have experienced or are experiencing this now, I think you'll, you'll, you'll be able to understand what he's saying. It's an image that bypasses the brain where normally it would impact and then you would decide what you want to do. On the contrary, the effect image that Dr. Perry talks about goes directly to your feeling system. It elicits a response from your feelings first. Then after that, your brain kicks in and decides, what the heck is this? And he says, that's what happened. That's what's happening now. And so he says, religion is astounded by it. They can't figure it out because everything that religion does is in the brain. It's intellect. And so they got billions of people all over the world who are suddenly having something happen in the mind, and they're feeling something. They're feeling this thing, and now they're thinking, what is it that I'm feeling? See? So after the brain gets involved with interesting thoughts about, you know, what's going on, then it moves in that direction. But by the time you've started to function in a spiritual organization of the mind, that's what he's talking about, then you begin to you know, with others who are flowing in the same way. See? So what happens is what Dr. Perry says, you feel it, you begin to flow in it, then you start to think about it. See? It's not that you say, I think I'll go down and see if I can get spiritual. You get spiritual, and then you say, I think I'll go down. And, and, and this is something that's happening all over the world, and the only ones that are obstructing it from reaching them are religious people and Christians. They can't deal with this because it's coming from God. And they don't believe that things come from God. They believe things come from the Bible, from the book. So they read it, and they read it, and they read it, and they read it, and they read it. But one thing, they never do it. Because once you start doing it, then they say it's a cult. 
So something happens or is happening, according to Dr. Perry, which is profoundly scientific. There is a reaction on the part of the human electrical system to the energies that are moving now. And when people react to the electrical energies that are moving through the universe now, other people call it spiritual. It's not. It's electromagnetic imagery. It's electromagnetic field. It is a physical thing that is happening in the brains of people all over the world. But people who don't understand or who have never studied these things or have never thought about them instantly think the only words they know, occult, demonic. You know who says occult, demonic? People with the intellect of the Dark Ages. Because they don't understand these things. They don't know. Here you have brilliant people in universities all over the country trying to explain what's going on. And you'll sit in these churches with glass stained windows and sing songs from the 1700s and say, we got it all figured out. You got a 1400 to 1700 mentality trying to talk to scientists in the 20th, 20th century. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. Pure science, and we call it religion. See, the Bible that you have in your hands is actually ancient science of 4000 BC. Okay, look at it. Ancient science of 4,000 B.C. That's the Bible. Now you come to grips with the New Age, which is a religious science of 2,000 A.D. See? And the 2,000 A.D. science that we are experiencing now simply explains the questions that the 4,000 B.C. science raised. What is this 4,000 B.C.? This is what it is, 2000 AD. And in between here are people who are masking themselves in these churches with bells and smoke flying all over the place who refuse to listen to anybody explain to them what the heck this is. What was the, the Dead Sea Scrolls? What was the, 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 the uh, I was going to say the Leaning Tower of Pizza, the, the Red Sea and all of this. What was this stuff? No, we don't want to know. Don't tell us. We can't listen to that. Our church said no. Our pastor said we can't listen to this. That's how they stick their fingers in their ears, and they all go right down the toilet together. <laughs> you know, Joseph Campbell said something that's really interesting. He says that what is amazing is that Western civilization, which has opened the minds of all mankind to the infinite wonders of the universe, is saddled with this little religious superstition that forbids its people from understanding the cosmic picture of truth. You're not, you're not allowed to understand it. You're not allowed to talk about it. You sit and sing these songs from the 1400s. I walk in the garden along. I walk already. Who cares? And it's all of the same. I'm a wretch. I'm just saved. I'm and then they bring out the country music and bang on guitars. And they're all going to heaven. And they're living in hell. Living in pure hell. And don't ever talk about any of this. They don't want to hear about the doctors or the scientists who are explaining this stuff. It's much it's, it's like a play. It's, it's, it's much more bizarre just to float off and blame everything on some devil. And then you don't have to take the responsibility for it. Right? You know, let me tell you, let me show you something. And Albert is a physiologist. Christianity, the religion that you're born with, teaches the creation of man and the world 6,000 years ago. Do you know that is doctrine? I mean, it's nothing, and not only that, but in there were two English people, Adam and Eve. These are English people who were there. From London they came. Well, how did these two people from London get there? Can you hear them? Hi ho, pip pip. What are you talking to the snake, old girl? Hi ho, how about a little, little apple there, Adam, old boy? Pip pip. What the heck is this? Now, this wasn't bad enough, but then they're going to write a Bible. They don't write it from Worcestershire or Chestershire. This is in Palestine. <laughs> Everybody's name. You know what their names are in Palestine? Get this. Philip. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Hi, ho. I'm one of the apostles, you know. Hey, tip, tip. This is my buddy Nathaniel. Nathaniel in Palestine. Could you get this one? And then who do we got standing on a corner singing a duet of Amazing Grace? Peter, Paul, and Mary. 
This land is your land, this land. Doesn't anything tell you that they made it up? Don't you get a brief inkling that this isn't true? That English people were not running around Palestine. There was never a guy named Philip or Nathaniel or John or Peter or Paul or Mary running around there doing all of this stuff. They, 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 they made it up. If they didn't make it up, they would have used the right name. Do you know the ancient Mayan, no, I don't know if you know, there's an ancient Mayan, yep, Mayan, do you ever hear that? M-A-Y, whatever, A-N, showed a calendar of 64 million years. They said they traced back civilization and under, 64 million years. The Hindu Kalpas calendar shows a lifetime so far of this planet, 4 billion 320 million years. These nincompoops say it all started 6,000 years ago. That's like the day before yesterday. Well, you know what? They come into church and buy that, that a thousand say, yes, hallelujah, praise God in his holy name. Tell us more. Adam, he's banging this. this and, and the amazing thing is, this is, the, this is the funny part. The bunch that believes this are the, part, are the people that live in the scientifically sophisticated West. The barbarian pagans, you know, who could chart the cosmos thousands of years ago, they're, they're pagans. Don't listen to them. The sophisticated ones of the West. Here, 6,000 years ago it started. It's like the day before yesterday. There's another interesting comparison of East versus West. And this, this is too, is very important. In the East, the ultimate divine power, which is God, is neither male nor female, but transcendent. It's not a man. It's not a woman. You know doggone well you've been taught God is a father, right? I mean, they really believe that this Jesus, this is his father. Really father. I mean, just like your father. This is his father. Could you imagine if your father nails you on a tree because somebody else screwed up? <laughs> what a guy this is. And I'm going to church and kneeling for this guy. Pull it on you. I don't like that. Well, you know, somebody's got to go, so I'm going to kill you. What the hell is this all about? I don't know. There ain't no way. We can make money. We can make a whole religion on this one, Jesus. Let's do it. Who would ever believe that? This is, this is, but this is, you take little kids in. We love, oh, God is such a loving God that he slaughtered his son. Why? Because. Because why? Because he wanted to forgive you. Why didn't he just say, hey, forget about it. Don't worry, I'm not mad. <laughs> Couldn't he do that? Wouldn't that be? Would you say, hey, don't worry about it. You screwed up, forget about it. Hey, you know, come on, let's have some fun. Let's go to see Jimmy Buffett. Back with this. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to kill somebody. <laughs> we are going to kill somebody. Get the nails. <laughs> huh? Is this something? We're going to kill him. And, of course, we all love it. And then we make songs about it. You know how much money a guy made? On a hill far away, stood an old rugged crawl. And made a fortune, this guy. Still collecting royalties. His great, 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 great grandsons. Are co I'm collecting royalties, and this guy getting butchered on this thing. And do you know what? He wasn't the first. It was 16 saviors before Jesus that got the same treatment. Because the crucifixion is as Jesus talked to John in that apocryphal book of John. This is a cross of light that happens within. Do you know what John, do you know? There's a book in the Bible called the Gospel of John. All right? John also wrote the book of Revelation. All right? And John was the disciple that Jesus loved the best. All right? Fine. Go out and read the Gospel of Thomas that the church was not allowed to be in the Bible. You know what John says in there? I met Jesus after the crucifixion in a cave. And he said he did not suffer the things that they say he suffered. And I walked out of the cave and laughed at everybody. And this is a quote from John the Apostle. And I realized that God did all of this symbolically to save souls. Where's that in your book? They won't let you see that. Go buy one. Take it to them. Share it with them. Buy 20 of them. Distribute them to your church. <laughs> John, Thomas, huh? go. Show them. There's nothing in the world like showing people who have been deprived of understanding and deprived of reading material. Hey, did you ever see this? John says it was symbolic. It didn't happen. 
Yes, sir. They would they would just discredit just stand up there. They would probably just discredit the book saying, well, he's doubting Thomas and that's why he wrote that. Sure. But jo he didn't say it. John said. But you know there's an interesting part about that. Let me tell you about the book. This is how the book's going on here. <coughs> they went in the Catholic Church. The, the Bible that you you have in your hands, the King James Bible, has the books in it because the Catholic Church ordained it. Okay, don't think that Protestants wrote it. It wasn't written by the Assembly of God. It was written by the Catholic Church. And what they did, <coughs> they committed the Second Council of, and I'm talking from an old Catholic or young Catholic. I mean, you know, I'm young, but I was an old Catholic. <laughs> but, I mean, they, this is how they did it. They all gathered at the Second Council of wherever it was, and they took all of the books that were written, you know, and they put them on the floor. And they said they were going to lock the doors and they were going to pray that God took whatever books he wanted off the floor and put them up on the table, and they would be the books. I'm telling you, it's exactly how it happened. The thing was, they never said who had the key. One guy had the key. And he snuck in, and he took the ones, and he gathered them up. And you know what happened? He probably dropped one that should have been in there. And he said, come get back out of here. And he put them up, and he, you know, the guy slipped them to 20 bucks or whatever it was for putting them on the table, and he left. That's, and that's why you have the books in the Bible that you have now is because the Catholic bishops prayed that they would fly off the floor onto the table. But they never revealed who had the key. Okay? So, you know, love it. Your holy, God's holy word. Okay. Uh, but you see, where, 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 where Christianity said that God is a man, in the East it said, no, it's a divine power, neither male or female. So the Judeo-Christian idea, idea of divine power is totally outside of science. And this is, let, let's just conclude it with this thought, and this is interesting. The Eastern idea of a source of power that functions in the mind and nature is totally comfortable with Western science. No problem. Listen to what I said. The Eastern idea of a source of power call it God, that functions in the mind and nature is totally comfortable with science. And this is how Joseph Campbell summed it up. It is an amazing thing to me that the spirit of the East is more comfortable with the science of the West than is the spirit of the West itself. Thank you very much for uh, sharing this time on the uh, Joseph Campbell's and the Confrontation of East and West. What are we doing next week? Do you have